Hello everyone, how's it going? Here we are with the third edition of the Mars Sluggers tier list. The last one we did was back in 2021. It's been almost two years. And now that we have access to all the stats in Mars Sluggers, we have learned a lot about team building, chemistry. Of course, we mean for this list to be as accessible as possible. So we'll mostly be looking at it from a uh, mixture between casual and competitive play. Mies will be factored in a little bit, but they won't be the end-all be-all. We often don't even use Mies. Assuming that you're using nunchucks. And stars uh, on, stars items on, items on. on. That's the rule set. Exactly. And we're going to rank the alternate colors at the end of the list so things don't get too cluttered. So stick around for that. And All with right. that out of the way, we're ready to begin. Let's do it. The definitive Mars Sluggers 2023 tier list. The winner of the worst character in the game award goes to... Baby Luigi. With the exact stats data mind, we've seen that he is just by far the weakest character in the whole game. His throwing speed is a 20, dead last, nobody else even has below a 30. And the same thing with charge hit and slap hit power. And we've used him a lot with Baby Mario and Yoshi in the outfield, but with his throwing speed, it's just like, it's just not a good idea. And his super jump ability is pretty useless and so short anyway it, it the hitbox <laughs> is not that high and his stamina is terrible curve is terrible so you wouldn't use him as a pitcher and his star swing's decent but there's really no reason to pick him over the babies or even any other character in the game speaking of babies right above him is baby mario they're very similar players although baby mario is just a little bit better in almost every respect his close play ability is also much better than Baby Luigi's super jump ability. And he does have red me chemistry, which is a little bit more useful across the board with linking to important characters. However, he's still pretty much just a liability, so we almost never use him in actual games. And next up, to all the Toadsworth fans, you're welcome. And I owe you a slight apology, because last time I said he was the worst character in the game, mainly because he was the worst fielder in the game. But since then, we've realized that fielding stat does matter in terms of bobble rate, and he has a good fielding stat. So that combined with his decent throwing speed, I don't think he's the worst fielder in the game anymore. I don't know who is, um, but still, he's tiny and slow, and his pitching, it's been very polarizing. But I think, especially uh, online, I like to see Toadsworth pitch because it's nice to have a slow thing that's easy to react to. There's so many great fast pitchers that Toadsworth is really not that good once you get used to him, so he stays as the third worst in the game. Next up is Diddy Kong. Hopefully, you've seen Beckett's video saying that he is arguably the worst character in the entire game. He is. And this is still accurate, but only if you don't choose him as the captain of your team. In that relatively niche scenario, Diddy Kong actually isn't that terrible, because his star swing is decent, especially if it costs only one star point to use. However, that is niche, mostly because Diddy Kong is pretty awful in many other respects, with particularly chemistry being a very, very low point, as he has no me chemistry at all. Unfortunately, there's just little reason to choose him as your captain, and his useless clamber ability, pretty bad stats, and as aforementioned, awful chemistry just don't do him any favors. And right above Diddy is another member of the Kong family, but not one that you would expect, and it is Tiny Kong. She has just very few redeemable qualities. Her bat is average, her star swing goes too far and is usually caught, and of course she has the useless clamber ability. She can play infield decently, I will say, being, you know, a girl and being pretty tall. So she's not the worst infielder ever, but you'd only pick her there if there's no other good infielders available. And the light blue me chemistry, like, only links her to, like, Funky Kong, which is useless, and, you know, light blue Yoshi. So that's pretty bad. Chemistry overall is terrible, and that's why she lands this low on the list. The top of F tier is Dixie Kong. She is really similar to the previous two characters that we just mentioned, Diddy and Tiny Kong, but she has some very slight key advantages that makes her better than both of them. The main advantage she has over Diddy Kong is the fact that her star swing is, while it's not a captain star swing, still very solid and is guaranteed to only cost one star point. It's also better than Tiny's. Exactly. And as compared to Tiny, while her stats are also not very good, she does have better chemistry than the fact that her connection to pink me rather than light blue me brings her 
uh, closer in line with much better characters like Birdo, for example, which can be a very, very useful link. So overall, Dixie, still a really bad character, but lands on top of F this time around. And that rounds up F tier. Let's move on to D tier. At the bottom is Goomba. He's just so incredibly mid. I mean, if you don't have anything stand out in Mario Sluggers, you're just gonna get left behind. His power isn't like that bad, but his hits are just so floaty and they're just like always caught. I can never get a good hit with Goomba. The one advantage he does have is Ball Dash, which is what keeps him out of F2 basically. Next up is Paragoomba, who is really similar to Goomba overall. Just a little bit better in the fact that Flying is a little bit more generally useful than Ball Dash, which can only really be used in the infield, and his stats are overall slightly better in general. But really, neither of them are that great, and that's why they end up both together at the very bottom of D. And next up on D is Toadette. Toadette has a pretty nice chemistry tree. She can link Birdo and Peach if someone already took Daisy, and giving her Toad and Noki chem really makes her fit well sometimes in a Mario team, and this is why she's in D tier, but she still has baby-itis, which means she could be an elite outfielder, but she's too s small and weak to do anything, <laughs> like, to, like I don't know, just hitting? You don't want to hit with her unless you have stars. But if you want an okay infielder, an outfielder that can counter Peach's star swing, Toadette can fill that role. Baby Daisy is actually pretty well-rounded, as far as babies go. She doesn't have the worst power ever. She's still pretty fast. She can pitch, although she's definitely not as good as Baby Peach. And her star swing isn't terrible. Unfortunately for Baby Daisy, she is still a baby and is still pretty weak overall. There's not too much reason to pick her. And her orange me chemistry is a little bit worse than Baby Peach. And Baby Peach is next. She is extremely weak, better than Baby Luigi, but still worse than like, every other character in the game, but instead of being ultra fast, she is an elite pitcher, and that is definitely better than just being fast in the outfield. You know, the curve stat at 80 makes her really, really good as a pitcher, but she tires really fast, so you can only use her for, honestly, maybe two or three or even one inning. But her chemistry with the Toads gives her another advantage over Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, and so even if you don't pick the other babies, you can get a decent outfield, including her, and she gets access to Birdo with her pink bee chemistry, which gives her the advantage over Baby Daisy. Have a rotten day, Wario. Oh, Wario. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do with you? We had him at the top of C last time, but he just deserves D after everything <laughs> that we've seen from him. <laughs> he is a pretty bad hitter hitting mostly line drives. He's not good on defense or offense. He's slow. He's pretty big, but he just bobbles a lot and his chemistry is pretty awful. His star swing is almost useless because you can just run in front of it with your nunchuck and <laughs> you can get <laughs> jump guess over an easy out. So as we can see, Wario is a little bit of a meme and that's why he's the second worst captain in the game. Next okay. up is the most well-rounded player in the game, if you catch my drift, and that is Monty Moonball Mulrat at the top of D tier. What a glow up he's had. I mean, let me tell you, he was the worst on original tier list. And he doesn't really fit in a traditional team, which is why we honestly don't pick him that much. But I've been much more impressed with his hitting lately. After I did 99-0 with him, and he was just hitting line drive after line drive after line. It was unreal. And it took less than two hours to get 99-0 with him. And if you hold the nunchuck stick up while you're hitting, you can use angle manipulation to get the line drive to drop before the outfield, which people have said works really well for him. With a decent star swing and being a decent fielder, having chemistry with Shy Guy on a Birdo-centric team, he can be a pretty all right player, I'd say. Koopa! Ugh. He's what are you doing? a painfully average player overall, but he earns his way into the bottom of C through a couple of key things that differentiate him from the perils of Goomba and Paragoomba. He has chemistry directly with Bowser and Bowser Jr., which is really important because most of the time when you're building your Bowser team, you're not gonna choose Koopa and Goomba and Paragoomba and all of them because they're just not great stat-wise and they don't offer that much. So if you just need an extra additional character to fit into your Bowser team, Koopa is a much better choice. 
We've seen how powerful teams need characters who can get on base consistently, and that's exactly what Koopa offers to the powerful Bowser team. Next up is the flying version of Koopa, Paratroopa, and we have Koopa and Paratroopa in the bottom of C, like Goomba and Peregroom in the bottom of D, for similar reasons. Paratroopa is a pretty versatile fielder. He's got, uh, you know, super jump, which isn't that useful, but floating's very useful, and his fielding stat with a 70, and his throwing speed's decent, makes him pretty nice to field, and he's got not terrible power and a decent star swing, so, you know, why isn't he higher? Well, unfortunately, Koopa has chemistry with players like Bowser Jr. and Dry Bones, but Paratroopa really only has Bowser, Koopa, and Paragoomba, so it's a lot harder to fit him on the Bowser team. But if you do end up with Paratroopa on your team, he will perform admirably. Blooper is an extremely sneaky player. His changeup moves by so fast that you barely have any time to react to it, and his close playability covers the fielder with ink so he can just slip right on by. He also hides in the background amongst some pretty powerful chemistry partners, like Wiggler and Petey. Overall, his stats are pretty mediocre, but his decent pitching and his solid fielding abilities because he's a floating character make him a generally acceptable choice and earn him the middle of C. Here he is, the best baby, Baby Kong, AKA Baby DK. He really doesn't feel like a baby. He's got pretty good power at the plate and a really good throwing arm. And his feeling stat is elite, second only to Diddy Kong. Yoshi chemistry is also huge. It gives him more opportunities to play in the outfield and to show off his cannon. Even though he's a menace whenever he use, we use him, he's still a Kong. And with his clamber and pretty bad brown me chemistry, he deserves C tier. Do we really need to say any more? No way. Shy Guy is a really unusual character. We don't pick him that much, but he has some very niche uses and some interesting characteristics that few other characters have. His chemistry is pretty weird, linking Birdo, Boo, and Monty Mole. And while the Monty Mole link isn't that useful, it can lead to some very interesting and unexpected teams that people might find hard to play against. In general, his hitting's not bad. He has a 55 power stat for his uh, charge hit, and his star hit's a pretty low line drive, both of which are not too useless. In general, his uh, 70 in fielding um, and his super dive ability, which is pretty weak, but definitely much more useful ability to have than many other options, make him a solid fielder and a generally all right, all around character. We really wanted to put dry bones higher, but we kept thinking of reasons that hold him back. He is a really good hitter, but in other categories, he's just really lacking. You know, his pitching is pretty middling, so you wouldn't want to use him. He's not fast and not big, so being in the infield or outfield doesn't really suit him perfectly. But the biggest drawback is definitely his chemistry. He only has chemistry with Bowser and Koopa, and you're only really going to use him on the Bowser team. And a lot of other Bowser characters are uh, just better in general and way more connected, like the Hammer Bros. And so Dry Bones becomes overlooked and is one of our least chosen characters in the game. You know, it's really interesting how the characters who have babies don't have chemistry with the baby version themselves, but Koopa has a chemistry with the, the dead version of himself. <laughs> He's just really connected to it. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say about the Mario universe? It's hard to say. Next up is Funky Kong. He's a decent character overall with great power and strength, but... Funky he, Kong? Below, what about, below DK. What about Funky? Below, below DK. DK. We agreed that Funky Kong was No, we didn't. We said DK. Funky over DK. You really think DK is not better? not true. DK is way better. He's a captain. He has a pretty decent star swing overall. Okay, pretty decent, but we can catch it in like 10 different ways. His now. me chemistry is way better. Way brown, brown me. me. Way brown better. Me is no, it's better. really not that good. Definitely funky better. has a great fielding stat. And you can put him at third, and he's not going to bobble everything. You always even need DK to catch that. It's not that important, as especially as a Kong. You're not or like specifically these. If you're going to play as Funky, you're going to put him at third. DK is going to be catcher because he's useless, and also he has baby DK cam. But DK, DK can hit dingers. Has no His baby DK cam. So funky can better. hit uh, dingers too. I mean, I we're just going to have to agree disagree. I definitely think. Funky oh! After some deliberation and careful thought. We've decided to put Funky over DK at the top of C. 
I think that is a fair choice. Well, Luigi, number one, but really bottom of the tier. <laughs> yeah, he's just fallen so far since his glory days in S in our first tier list. He's hard to rank because he's a weird, weird character. He's definitely <laughs> got some pitching chops with his <laughs> quick pitch. It's just really hard to deal with. You can't really charge up on it. And he has the strange charge hit mechanic that we made a video on, but his chemistry is the worst in the game other than Diddy Kong, straight up. He just has chemistry with Wario and Purple Me, and Purple Me gets you Purple Toad, and that's about it. Uh, I do like his Star Swing, but it is luck dependent, and his Quick Throw ability, it's just wasted because his throwing speed's so low, but he's still a good infielder, so that's why we have him at the very bottom of B tier. I had to fight tooth and nail with Beckett to get Noki up to this point in the tier list, but I think it's very much worth it. We've really done Noki no justice in past tier lists, mostly because we've overlooked some of her greatest strengths. She doesn't have great power, yes, but she can be a really elite infielder because of her ball dash ability, which with all three Nokis can completely shut down any possibility of any rundowns. She has Mario chemistry, which is super helpful, and also Pianta chemistry, which connects her to some very powerful players in general. She is a pretty solid choice for any team, can shut down Peach's star swing, and in general, I think we've been underutilizing her in our games. Speaking of Pianta, he comes in next in B tier. Pianta's just like a much better Wario. They both have the laser beam ability, which gives, I don't know if it's a random chance, but it only activates sometimes that you'll get a really fast throw to home plate. And this is mostly useful in the outfield, but you wouldn't really want to play Pianta in the outfield. But it can sometimes happen in the infield as well, so it gives him a little boost. But his hitting and chemistry are really what lands him in B tier, so even with his slow speed, he comes in two tiers higher than Wario. We've honestly done a disgrace to Toad in previous tier lists, putting him in D tier in the first one. But since then, we've picked him in a lot of teams in our two-player gameplay videos. He's pretty solid. He has great contact and decent dinger hitting capabilities, especially Yod, who we've basically created a whole cult around. In addition to that, he's decently fast. He has useful chemistry, although he does lack direct chemistry with Mario, which kind of knocks him down a little bit. And in general, he's a, he's a great choice for any good guys team. So pick Toad. You won't regret it. Luigi! Luigi! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Luigi is a solid five tool player. Not many other players have this combination of great speed, fielding stat, as well as a decent throwing arm. And with a super jump in height, he can catch balls at the fence that nobody else can get to. And this comes in handy in the outfield, but he only has chemistry with Mario and Daisy. So this really limits his versatility and we don't really pick him that much in general. But his star swing is much harder to catch using nunchucks than it was when we just used Wii remotes, so he's not going to drop below middle of B tier. At this point, Boo is solidified as the very best pitcher in the whole game. He has a record-shattering curve stat of 89, which is higher by a lot than even the second best player, Magic Hoopa, with 81. He's a solid player in general beside that, mostly because his star swing is actually decent, allowing it to drop just before the outfielders. And he's a good fielder because of his floating ability and decent chemistry with King Boo and other useful players who you might want on your team. So, he earns the top end of B. Ah, uh, King K. Rule. We've always known he was one of the best power hitters in the whole game, but we've always had trouble hitting with him. And if you look at the stats table, the mystery is solved. He has a charge hit power of only 18 and nobody else has below 20. So. If you get a sweet spot hit, it'll probably be a home run, but it's really hard to do. He also is the sole owner of the worst fielding and running stats in the whole game. He's like the anti-baby Luigi, honestly. And it's funny because they're both green, but uh, he does have ke chemistry with King Boo and Critter. And if you have chemistry with Critter, you also have uh, indirect chemistry with all four of those me colors. So putting K. Rool on your team isn't as hard as it may seem. Still, K. Rool is one of the least versatile players in the whole game, which keeps him at B tier. Also, why would they have given him laser beam? It's like so that's so dumb. dumb. That's catcher. so useless. <laughs> Throwing to himself would work. Let's go. Wiggler's main appeal is the useful combination of speed and power. 
That, plus his chemistry with King Boo and Petey, makes him a very interesting character and fill a useful niche in the boss character types. He can hit for the fences, while also easily getting on base due to his speed, and he's a decent fielder, too, because of his solid height and his fast running. He is also skinny, which means he can dodge items a lot of the time, but it does reduce his range. That as well. However, I do often feel like he lacks the oomph in some ways. Like, his, his hitting could be a little bit better. He's weaker than other power hitters, and he doesn't run quite as fast as someone, say, Yoshi. So, we do have to put him at the top of B tier, but he's a strong character and a good complement to many other really good characters. Let's move on to A tier. And we'll start with me at the very bottom. And the Mii's are built to be just boring characters, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And the main appeal of me is, of course, their chemistry. Uh, depending on which color you pick, they have chemistry with literally anyone on the roster, except Diddy Kong, of course. Why? And this makes some very interesting uh, links in terms of chemistry that you can fill, like, especially Wario, who can't go to anyone else. You can go Wario, Yellow Me someone like Wiggler or Yellow Pianta. And the quick throw for the Miis is by far the best quick throw in the game because of their strong throwing arm. So they're pretty surprisingly good in the field. So in sum, Mi is bottom of A tier, but stick around to the end to see where we place the individual Mi colors because that's way more important. Bowser has a very unique disadvantage and that his list of bad chemistry partners is longer than any other character in the game by far. I guess it doesn't pay to be a villain. Unfortunately, this makes him pretty inflexible in a lot of ways, because you can't really build teams with him unless you're building them around him. Luckily for him, his good chemistry is also amazing, so he has a ton of very strong characters that you can uh, build teams with him as the centerpiece. The Bowser team is generally known as being one of the best teams in the game. He has a decent throwing arm, making him a good fielder, and he's obviously an amazing player at offense, hitting dingers like crazy, but his star swing kind of sucks. Generally speaking, He's a solid pick for bottom of A tier. We used to have Critter in S tier before we realized that the Hammer Bros were basically just better. You know, Critter is a great player with a very strong package. Super dive, great power, and a fabulous arm of the field. But he's really held back by chemistry. Only with, you know, the main Critter is chemistry with Greed Me and K. Rule. And that's, that's hard to fit a team around. And someone like Hammer Bro has much better chemistry. So we had to bump Critter down a tier from last time into middle of A. When you look at Magikoopa's in-game raw stats, you wouldn't assume that they'd be good for much of anything outside of being a decent Bowser team pitcher. If you made that assumption though, you'd be pretty wrong. Magikoopa is a great pitcher, super high curve as aforementioned during the boo section of the tier list, and throws a lob that is incredibly difficult to hit, especially if you're a new player. Chemistry is crazy good too, forming the glue for the Bowser team, with super important links like Bowser Jr. and Hammer Bro, and basically you can form, you can even put uh, Magikoop in the outfield because of Magikoop's super great super dive. And but they, they, they yeah, floating. That's true. They do serve better as infielders though, and that's why they make sense almost always to be chosen in any form of evil focused team. The one drawback is, of course, their offensive skills, which are pretty lackluster, but their star swing isn't terrible. They are extremely slow, though. For the first time ever, Peach has fallen out of S tier and all the way oh, to A tier. Whatever are we to do? She went from first to fourth and all the way down to middle of A. Travesty. And we realized her shortcomings are way more severe than we originally thought. You know, her star swing can be countered by a, a good super dive like PD's or Critters, and her quick throw, it's mediocre when you compare it to other abilities. But despite these flaws, she's still a fantastic pitcher and an easy pick for most teams given her meta-altering star swing and her pretty solid chemistry. Despite his bug-like shape, Hammer Bro is one of the most powerful offensive players in the entire game. He has a lot of similarities to Critter, with an incredible super dive, super powerful hitting arm, and great throwing arm as well. Hammerbro actually makes for a pretty dang amazing outfielder, especially when you pair him with Bowser Jr. and you put him on left and right fields. Even though he's not that fast, 
he can still connect with a lot of balls just because of that wonderful super dive. In addition, his chemistry is great, and there's just not a lot of negative things you can say about him, earning him a spot closer to the top of A tier. And right above Hammer Bro, as the best player on the Bowser team, is his son, Bowser Jr. And don't let his short size fool you, Bowser Jr.'s got some great pop to his bat, and is a pretty formidable player in general. His star swing is pretty nifty, and you really have to plan around it, either getting a really good super dive or floating characters in the outfield to counter it. And he's also a great outfielder, as mentioned before, the Hammer Bros, with his speed and arm strength. That's a really tough outfield to deal with. He's also got chemistry with, you know, Hammer Bro and Magic Koopa. But on the Bowser team, Bowser has chemistry with them anyway. He doesn't really connect players that couldn't already be connected. So he's not absolutely necessary in the Bowser team, which is why he's not higher. But still, he adds some much needed speed to the Bowser team. And his lob is surprisingly good as a pitcher. So if the Magic Koopas are tired, he can come in for relief, which is why he's near the top of A tier. You ever feel like being big? Yes. Because King Boo wakes up every day and makes that very decision. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. I wish I was as big as that. <laughs> While King Boo is not as hulkingly huge as he is in Luigi's Mansion 3, his size still really helps out in the infield, in addition to his floating ability and his throwing arm. He has a pretty rare characteristic of being both great at pitching and great at hitting, causing us to compare him to Shohei Otani in tier lists of the past. Not quite as fast, but still great. Indeed. His chemistry with Boo, Wiggler, Petey, and K. Rule is amazing, and there's just not a whole lot of negative attributes about King Boo. He's a great choice for almost every team, and if the other player picks him first, you know you're going to be in for a hard time. And King Boo ends our A tier, so now we get to finally move on to the S tier, the best five characters in the game. And these five characters could really be ordered in any way. I could see arguments for all of them, but... Let's start at the bottom, and we're giving that spot to Daisy. And this is a really good compliment to Daisy. You know, she's a fabulous character in pretty much every sense of Mars Sluggers, with almost no weaknesses. And her only true weakness is that her star swing can be caught by non-floating characters with some new te tech where you attack into the flower field. But still with that, I, I like the star swing a lot. And, you know, she got a decent bat even without the star swing. So if you combine her... Really solid pitching, a uh, great fielder with a super dive. She ends up being a top five character, and she shares a lot of strikes with the next character on the list, which is... We're the, the Mario, Mario Brothers, Brothers, and Plummins are game. We're, we're not, not like, like the, the others who get all the fame. <laughs> <laughs> Mario is really tough to rank. He's not the best individual character at any one thing, but he's just so great at virtually every possible characteristic that you could have in this game. He's a really good fielder. He's an incredible runner with a running set of 70. He's a great pitcher whose pitching curve stat even outranks that of Daisy's, who we used to consider to be amazing. And his star swing is decent-ish, but even without star swing, he can still hit really consistent live drives and sometimes even home runs. His chemistry is fabulous, being the cornerstone to many crucial links in this game, with partners including Yoshi, Peach, Luigi, and even Piantas and Nokis, mm -hmm. making them very useful for any team orient around Mario. He's also part of one of the best possible outfields in the game, with him, Yoshi, and Birdo as well. He's just a great player. It's really hard not to pick him in most teams, and yeah, he definitely has earned his place in S for the first time. Now we move into the top three characters in the game. These are all really close. It's really It was really hard for us to choose, but we're going to go at third place with Petey Piranha. And Petey is the character that all the beginners gravitate towards. He's obviously really good. I mean, his hitting stat is almost off the charts. But even if you look below the surface, he is really, really just great and meta-defining. As we mentioned in our video, he's got chemistry with some amazing players like Birdo. They make a great pairing. And King Boo, Wiggler, and Blooper. I mean, that's just unreal. And you can also get to Yoshi through Birdo or Light Green Me if Birdo's taken. And on the field, you might not think he's much of a fielder, but his super dive is has a huge hitbox and his jump catches cover so much ground, even though his speed is pretty slow. He's not much of a pitcher. That doesn't take much away from the fact that you really want him on any team. In second place is Birdo, and it's pretty easy to see why. 
we've recently begun to appreciate her more and more. Her chemistry is unparalleled, and she's the only character outside of the Mies who connects the two main clans of good and evil in the game. She's an incredible fielder, and you can place her in either the outfield or the infield for dramatic success because of her super dive being incredible, her chemistry, as aforementioned, being really good. She's a girl, so she can catch Peach's star swing, and she's decently fast, even, uh, allowing her to dominate in the outfield. The only weakness, really, with her is that her star swing is absolutely atrocious, and she's not a great hitter outside of that. She can hit line drives and sometimes dingers, but isn't a top tier by any means in the hitting department. So, Birdo's great. You'll pick her most of the time, but she does, unfortunately, have one character who supersedes her. And that character is, of course, Yoshi, who comes in at number one for the second time in a row. And, I mean, what can we say about him that's not already been said? He's got the best speed in the game, probably the best fielder in the game, an amazing super dive with his tongue catch, and his impossible to catch star swing actually is possible to catch now. I caught it with a jump catch once, and that could be consistent if you jump, you can cancel the egg hitbox somehow, but still, I am in terror whenever Yoshi comes up and he's the captain. With one star swing, he can just clear the bases with just using one star and you can't do anything about it. He's just so incredibly dominant. We made a whole video on it, yeah. so go watch that if you haven't already, if you want more in-depth analysis. Also, his chemistry is elite, some, some of the best in the game right there. And so that's why Yoshi ranks at number one in our updated 2023 tier list. And lastly, we should mention where the alternate characters stand in this tier list. So we're gonna put it on screen right now. So you can see our final tier list, including the alternates. And there's a couple things I want to comment on about that. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory, but in terms of the me chemistry, that is most of the thoughts behind the rankings here. So the me chem, you know, uh, to explain it again, all of the red colored characters have chemistry with red me. So basically the more characters, the better characters you have chemistry with, the better your me is. And the ranking for me's goes uh, about as follows. Credit to Hong Zi for helping us with this. Prominent sluggers analyst. And we don't play with me's much, so. Uh, well, we might more now. We should. Yeah. They're pretty fun, honestly. So uh, the ranking is, you know, something like red me is the best. Mm hmm a lot of prominent characters, light green me, Yoshi and Petey, elite, yellow me, important for Wario, uh, and if Wiggler. You want to use him, then. Yeah, <laughs> and Wiggler. Uh, blue me, just a lot of alternates with blue colors. Green me, same with that. Pink me, some alternates, you know, you can get Dixie Kong out of the Kongs, Peach, Birdo, and brown me. Uh, this is where it starts to get kind of worse. You know, brown me, just not all that Some good. Kongs, yeah. Yeah, purple me. Almost useless except Waluigi. You can get to Toad. You can get to Purple Toad. Uh, white me. Orange me. Uh, light blue and black. I think black only connects Bowser and Bowser Jr. <laughs> so, oh, and, oh. and uh, Gray Shy Guy. Wow. So that's, yeah. So there's some bad me's, but there's some really good me's as well. And so that informed a lot of our choices about where the alternates go. Like if you take Shy Guy, for example, we rank the Shy Guys as red best, then green, yellow, blue, and gray. You know, just all around, pretty much the same as the normal one. Not too far off. However, Yoshi Alt. That's the one they're, interesting. They're definitely uh, a couple tiers down from Yoshi, but they're still really good. I like them a lot. And Pink, I actually like the best now. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, because Pink, the speed is it's not quite yoshi's but it's still really really good so i like speed yoshi would speed despair it, it, yeah, yeah that's what he is so i like <laughs> pink a lot and as well as uh the toads i have yod and blowed and poed top three because their hitting stats are better you can hit so many dingers with them oh, yeah compared to red toad and green toad not as many dingers so those are our thoughts behind the alternate uh version for our tier list if you disagree with some of these, if you think the Yoshi should be higher or lower, let us know. And yeah, that's it's been a blast to make. It was an amazing video. Thank you all for tuning into our tier list videos as always, and we'll see you in a couple more years when inevitably Wario is going to be in here. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> the meta's right. going to change. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, I missed Wario 
is truly trash. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the best clipper. <laughs> that's the best clipper. You have to say that. Man.